phase of music making day working on a secret song for a quite big pop kind of artist really looking forward to being able to share that information with you today since a lot asked in yesterday's video like showing you a little about my my outboard stuff how it's working why i have it how it's routed if it's necessary for a studio how much it improves the sound like my thoughts my experience and please as always excuse the mess it will be sorted out very soon i still need to change some things some cables need to be shorter some cables need to be higher quality like once this is optimized it will disappear promised Let's start with like the most important and that is definitely the room, the room acoustics, like everything very absorbing. If you're interested how the studio was built, there is a playlist down below where you can watch every single little step. Today we're focusing more on the setup and the gear and I would love to start right here. We have like four blocks here in this table. The first one, probably the most boring, but it contains everything that goes into the computer. We got here at the very top something that doesn't have to do anything with sound at all. That's the Color Chief DMX controller. It controls all of the, the lights here in the studio. I can select all of them, change the color to anything I want. That's kind of cool, epic. I can also like dim it entirely, make it really dark, make it react to music. Like, like it has, has an input right here. It's just like a fun little toy. And every day I switch it up a little green if i feel like it maybe blue or red the next one is the switch mate it's a simple unit where you can attach four microphones switch between them so you can pick the right mic for the right singer give them phantom power and then loop them through preamps so you can select mic one preamp loop one or preamp loop two three four and kind of this way really fast compare what's best for the singer songwriter or, or like the input source speaking of input source i got here the warm audio tone beast i love it for for guitars you can also record vocals with it it's a preamp same as everything below it that's the midas 500 series it's it's a very cheap 500 series unit i'm lucky this one doesn't cause any problems some do and then the preamps i think all except for the very first two one no, actually just those four are preamps not original preamps these are clones but they sound very similar then we have an eq like mastering eq shaping a reverb this one isn't isn't even plugged in and then compressor eq this stuff is chained into each other and through the preamp loops so i can have a vocal that goes through an eq and a preamp or just a preamp that's why i have these um, twice i can select if i want to compress on the way in or not it's very flexible then also here is the argon 8m it's a synthesizer that is controllable within your DAW. so that's something i really like I, I haven't tested it too much. I, I only got it like a week or two ago and I'm right now finishing up a lot of songs and not starting a lot of new songs. So can't really say a whole lot about it at the moment. I'll rise up from the ground like the Phoenix. The next section is for mastering mostly. We got the Better Maker compressor, Better Maker EQ, Better Maker Limiter. And I have to say out of all of the stuff I own, these three, and especially the limiter, I couldn't live without anymore. First of all, all of them are controllable in your DAW. So you got a little plugin. It doesn't do anything to the sound. The sound comes out of these analog boxes, but you can control it. So you can recall, you're a lot faster. You can save settings, presets. It's amazing. You get the advantages of both words, analog and digital. And the limiter, for example, on this song right here is actually set to 100% clipping. So I'm actually clipping 1 dB on the master and then do the final limiting that really seals off the track within the DAW. The compressor usually has like, uh, as you can see, a side chain. So everything below 300 isn't really affected. And the EQ highly, highly depends on the song. I always have it in mid-side mode so I can 
like EQ the side differently to the mid frequencies. Sometimes I need that, sometimes don't. This right here is an SSL G bus clone. I sometimes like to use it on, on the drum bus channel to parallel compress and glue everything a little together. And at the very top, kind of the brain switching point of the entire setup, the SPL medicine, it's an interface. I got a second one right here. So I got 32 ins and outs. In a nutshell, the first eight are all of the, the inputs from mics and synthesizers, as well as one and two, the master in of the limiter. These three are chained up. The next inputs are for, for more synthesizers and, and other stuff, more mics, everything that goes in. And then for, for the outputs, let's maybe first explain the next section and then the routing, because it's a little complicated and you first need to know what, what's here. So this section is, is more for like the buses. We got again a medicine for the ins and outs. The Mixstream XP summing device and I can switch to mono if I need to. It's very simple. You just go in there and yes, we could now discuss if summing does something, if it improves your mixes, if it's just a waste of time. I don't want to start that. That's maybe something for another video, but for me personally, I like to have it. Then we got the Tigler Cream. Also, this one is DAW controllable with motorized parties, which is really, I mean, it just looks amazing. Same thing here, the Schwerkraft Maschine, which is a very nice compressor that is very flexible. You have like 10 modes or 11 modes. Uh, for example, eight is drum smasher, optical compressor. So it combines a lot of compression into one unit. The, the cream is like a simple EQ, simple compressor unit. Meant for the master, but I'm using these two in a very flexible way. I can, I have the routing in a way so I can put them on, on anything. And then the newest unit, the Dangerous Debux Plus, which is a monitor controller with um, different ins, outs, Bluetooth connectivity, all that kind of good stuff, mono, different sets of speakers, headphones, uh, talkback mic. And what I really love, I've set up the USB because it is also an interface. I can now switch um, analog is, is my sound, like one and two out of Logic, but I can switch to USB and listen to a separate track within Logic that is volume matched and have their reference track or maybe the not mastered version or rough mix of a client and switch back and forth. Love it. I'm gonna greet the flames and let it the last section right here, hmm, it's kind of, especially up here, like in Germany, we like to call it Schmuddel Ecke. It's like, it's, it's a little dirty. It's not done really yet. So the first track unit right here, to be honest, isn't even attached. It's not connected, not using it at the moment. Then we got here an EQ that sounds actually really fantastic. Well, also that one is not in the chain that might come up in the next couple of days. The, the bottom unit right here is again a, a Rack 500 series thing from Wes Audio, it's called Titan. And within it, I have the Hyperion, which is an EQ that is also again, DAW controllable, recallable. You, you can already tell that's kind of the entire concept to just work fast. Because when I grew up, I had none of this. I never had a workflow with any kind of analog gear. And now that I have it, I don't want to lose the flexibility of working with an adult. It would destroy or change my entire working process. So this way I got both. I have like all of these, I can recall switch between styles, way more flexible. And then some Elysia stuff, not used that much. I'm thinking about putting these three actually into the B Studio, cause there I might use them a little more. I got here an envelope, a filter and compressor. I don't know, like an envelope, for example, I would never route something through just to give it more attack or less release. That's something I just do with the plugin fast and easy. And then this little unit right here is the Behringer X-Touch Mini. I love it. I'm thinking about building it actually into the desk to make it like flush with everything else. And I can select here, the bottom row is just solos on my eight summed buses. And I can just 
listen to the kick, just the kick and the bass. I can mute whatever I don't like. The last one has all of the effects. I can mute all of the reverbs or solo them. This one right here is for controlling the volume of that track that I'm comparing, so I can volume match them. This one is just play, pause, and the top one, still not sure, still programming this as I go. And the routing of this entire setup, it's maybe a little complicated, but once you, you got the, the a feel for it, it's just very fast and easy. Basically, I have um, 24 outputs that go into summing. Eight, this side, another eight go in here, another eight down here into the D-Box, which also has summing. In the D-Box, I'm summing all of my drum elements, so channel seven and eight is the kick drum. I can switch it to mono and make it like heart mono, which sounds analog. I mean, again, debatable, but it sounds better. And then clap snare on one and two or three and four hats, usually five and six loops or some other drum elements. And they all go into the first channel of the mix stream and all other elements, bass, I don't know, main synthesizers, vocals usually on nine and eight. I can mono it just to like listen to it in mono. Um, and then we have on 15, 16, again, the effects that I can also solo and mute right here. And then I got four stereo ins and outs that are for the analog stuff. So I can select with an IO plugin, the Cream or the Schreckhoff Machine or the G-Bus compressor. I'm thinking about heart rooting it like from here, from the summing of the drums to the parallel compressed G-Bus style compressor and then back into the other mix streaming speed. And all of the analog stuff is only used on, on like the, the summing channels on, on the buses. I rarely use it on individual stuff. For individual stuff, I just use plugins. So 95% of my music production is within the DAW with plugins. And then a little compression, EQing, and some master stuff on, on the buses. And then the last step from, from the last summing, it all goes into this chain right here. They're all just linked and then back into the computer for the very final limiting. Then I got headphones right here, hidden underneath the table. These are um, head, headphones, that's, that's what they're called. They are extremely big and some say they look stupid. I don't really care, at least they sound good and I can hear all of the details. I just use it to double check stuff, check for plops, clicks, and just have kind of an, another system to double check my songs. Arturia keyboard, and then back there, Quark Prolog. So yeah, that's my setup explained. I'll try to link most of the stuff down below in the description if you wanna go check it out. At the front, speakers, Eve speakers, and uh, a TV monitor so I don't have anything in between me and the speakers. And again, the room by far the most important. If you wanna go check out the entire building process and it's still not done, down below in the description is that playlist. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. If you have any suggestions for gear that I should get, let me know, because this setup is evolving and changing constantly. I'll probably make an update video in half a year or a year, and then let's see how many of these actually stayed. I already have some upgrade ideas, but more on that in another video. Thanks all for watching. See you tomorrow back again here in the studio.